welcome back everyone to the hello world guy and this is another episode of the python game python uh, pong game series and in this video we are going to continue by creating some logic for handling uh, uh, when our ball goes out of the screen on the boundaries on the left or right side and also adding some delay to the ball's movement so in order to get started with that uh, first we are going to make it so that currently uh, if i actually run my game what you can see is that it immediately starts now we don't really want that so what i'm going to do is I'm going to go here and create a variable called delay which I'll set to 3 now because we want it to wait a little while before it just not just kind of start uh, the game immediately but uh, wait a little while so that the player can kind of get ready and uh, that would happen on each like retry of the game as well so what we'll do is we'll do that and now we'll go down here when we are doing our ball movement and we'll only do the movement if our delay is uh, e is great not actually greater is equal to 0 and I'm going to actually make it less than or equal to not cause any errors due to floating point being wrong here and if that is greater than zero then what we are going to do is we are going to just subtract the delta time from it and remember that the delta time here is uh, uh, kind of how many seconds have passed in this frame so subtracting uh, the delta time should actually allow us to make it work in the unit of seconds instead of frames or anything else Alright, so now what we are going to do is I'm going to actually change this delay to 1.5 because 3 seconds is a bit too much. And if I run that, what you should be able to see is that our ball takes 1.5 seconds and then starts. Now if it goes on the left side of the screen, then it stays there and does not come back and uh, uh, that's not really what we want. So in order to fix this, what we will do is we will go here. Uh, where we were handling these checks and what I will do is I will actually uh, th in this ball and boundary collisions I'm going to separate these two conditions uh, the reason that I'm doing that if you remember in the last video we kind of created a way to uh, you know kind of basically if the ball touches the top we make it go towards the bottom so basically it bounces off the top and bottom however that is uh, what the approach we used there was not entirely correct before because if I go back uh, to what we had here uh, what you can see is that we are using the OR operator here. So we check if the it's uh, gone on like above the uh, height and if it's gone below the height and if it is then we just invert it. Now the problem arises is that if a sudden frame drop op occurs or something like that or the ball is moving very fast and it stays in the uh, you know on the other side of the boundary for two frames for example. If it does that then uh, on the first frame we'll invert it and on the second frame we'll invert it again and thus the ball will be stuck in an infinite loop in which it will keep inverting itself over and over again and it will always stay on the other side to fix that we'll just set it directly instead of inverting it so uh, if it is like uh, less than zero which means it's gone up then we can set this to ne a negative absolute value or actually the absolute value because uh, that will mean we want the uh, that to be positive and uh, if it's gone below then we'll set it to the negative absolute value so that it's always negative and here what we can do is uh, we are going to check if our ball x plus ball size is less than zero and notice how we are inverting this here so uh, we were subtracting the ball size earlier the reason i'm adding this is because i only want this to occur when the ball has completely gone off the screen not when its corner has gone off but when it has completely gone out then we want this to occur so i'll invert this here and uh, on the other side we will need to subtract that and if it's greater than screen width we'll check that and do note that we are checking the ball x here not the ball y and if that occurs then we are going to set the ball back to its default position at screen width divided by 2 like in the center of the screen uh, we are going to set it to that and for the ball direction we are going to just set it to the default as well and we are also going to set the delay to 1.5 let's go ahead and test that and you can see that uh, it uh, we can like have our ball bounce off and once it goes out of the screen it gets back in the center waits for a while and then starts again you can see that that is working quite well here so yeah that is pretty awesome and uh, this is uh, pretty cool but one thing you might want to do is that this initial direction we should be able to kind of randomize it instead of it always going towards player 2 so we need to kind of make it so that sometimes it's 1 and sometimes it's negative 1 Alright, so here we are going to also import random in order to actually randomize that stuff. And uh, we are going to do here, uh, go here uh, when we are setting our ball direction, we are going to set 1 if random dot twice true false. And this will allow us to get a random boolean, else we will set it to negative 1. 
so yeah we'll basically set it to 1 if this random returns true else we'll set it to negative 1 however the uh, problem is that well this will work quite well and I think it's pretty fine for our purposes here but you might want to use another function called random dot get rand bits with a v argument of 1 which will essentially allow you to r return the same thing and uh, it's a bit faster but uh, this is the more readable version and uh, uh, since this is just a tutorial I think we should prefer readability here of course if you uh, if performance really matters when we are uh, where you are implementing this then you can use that function as well and uh, in the initial setup I'm also going to change this to use uh, the random as well so what you should be able to see is that if I run this it starts by going towards the player 1 and if I allow it to go there then it again starts by going towards player 1 and again then it goes towards player 2 and then it goes towards player 1 so you can see that it is uh, randomized and it's sometimes going in this direction and sometimes it's going in that direction which means that it is working pretty well so yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video in the next video we're going to uh, set up scoring for our game so that we can increase the player 1 and 2 scores and also display them on the screen so that will be pretty awesome so stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and bye